Oh, hello. This is, uh, we're straight into the pistol round. This is not what I was expecting, but you know what? I'm ready. And we got some dual Berettas. See, this is a man after my own heart. Julie's in the pistol round. It has to be done. He didn't go Julie's in a kit, so he is slightly off on the right strategy. But nonetheless, the Julie's almost reign supreme. It's still looking like the pistol is going to be going the way of Nordavind. Probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm sure there's a in there somewhere. And, um... Oh, well, yeah, someone had to bleep that sound. Either way, it is going to be 1-0 to zero in favor of Nordavind. Alex, uh... How how can Nordavin win this one? They have a terrible win rate on this. What do they have to do? Uh, just kill people, I guess. It's a good thing they hired you at WePlay to be a professional analyst. Yeah, man. I honestly don't know what we would have done without you. I don't know. I look, I've, just, I've been, Every team's asking me to coach them. Everyone's like, can we get you in? You have some amazing insights that I've never heard before. Unfortunately, I'm just, I'm just too cool for that. But I, I think Nordavin have at least played this map, which is nice. It's, it's not like it's a map they never play. They've clearly put in some time on it. They play it a, a little bit. The worry is just that I, I've seen Endpoint on this map play crazy aggressive at times, on their CT side especially, which, which can catch teams off guard. And Tenski almost got caught off guard there, but he wins the fight with the Mac 10. Thomas here to try and back his teammates up, but the trade's looking good for Nordavin so far. As soon as I say that, though, Crucial gets another kill for Endpoint. So it's into a 3v3, but here come those smokes onto the A site. And this is where Endpoint might struggle. They've got a couple of nades, though, ready to be lined up. So once Nordavin try and get that bomb down, they might be in trouble here. These nades are still in hand, and this could work really well for Endpoint. Oh, nice. Baiting out the nades. They don't do damage, but still getting the bomb plant here might not be so easy. Never mind. He's fine. <laughs> Harry's going to be able to get it. Spammed a little bit as he looks to try and escape. Actually peeking out, he's found one. This is looking more and more possible as the seconds go by. They do need to get someone onto this bomb relatively soon. It's left all onto Croman, who's trying to sneak his way through the edge of the smoke, but he doesn't connect this shot. It's going to be crucial with a triple kill, and after a strong start, it will be quickly reduced to ashes as Nordavind are not going to be able to convert this second round. And that's a bit of a worry for me because, well, we've seen Endpoint play a ridiculous amount of maps over the last three months. They have over 40 maps of Dust2, but up there with that is going to be the 29 maps of Vertigo that they've played. I don't know if there'll be anybody that has more maps of Vertigo than that because that is a disgusting amount of Vertigo. Um, yeah, pretty much once every three days they play a Vertigo, which I, I can't say I even do that even when I'm just playing with my mate. So, you know, it is going to be one-to-one. -one. On the other side of things, Nordavin really don't play this map as anywhere near as much. And uh, their win rate is a hell of a lot worse. So it, it, it's not looking good for them. We are going to see an investment into this next round. Now, Tenski could, in theory, drop an AK, maybe go for something a little bit cheeky. But it does look like he's, at least now, saving some cash. But that might just be because we're in a pause. Yeah, always got to wait and see what the buys end up being at the end of the freeze time. Odds favoring Nordavind after they won their own map choice. We'll see if they can keep it going into Vertigo. Those buys have slowly but surely trickled on through for both teams. So it is that full investment coming in from Nordavind. Looking at the map stats for Endpoint here on Vertigo, uh, they've played a lot of it, so we've got a big sample size to work with, and it's their T side that has been most impressive for them. 60% win rate on that T side, whereas it's closer to 50% on their CT. So that gives you an idea of what to expect here from Endpoint. I think most of the good Vertigo teams nowadays are starting to get a lot of success on that T side. There's a lot of options for you. You can start to hit this B site much more effectively, and Nordavind is showing that they've got that up their sleeve, but Surreal just spots that player right up close and Nordavind are not finding any success on these entries. Finally, Tenski has something to say about that, but he's the only man doing anything in the round for Nordavind. Solid hold from Endpoint, just making sure that B site is not an issue for them early into this one. Yeah, I, I think one of the jokes that a lot of people make, including myself, is that a lot of the time this almost becomes like a, an A retake simulator or a ramp simulator for the two teams. The B-side definitely is not the favoured of the two, although it does have options. I, I think a more dynamic team will be able to put more pressure on that side of the map, but it is going to be your hold of the A-side, which sometimes becomes the be-all and end-all of your 
map of Vertigo. Um, Tensky seems to be having a bit of a crappy time at the moment, as he is just going to be hiding in the toilets. And for now, I guess this is just a round where they're talking things over a little bit. Maybe Tensky's uh, like playing it like an RTS game. He's just in the toilet, giving the orders to his teammates. He apparently has ordered them to die to Robin, which is uh, not going to be good for Nordovin at the start of this one. Surreal pushing down through B. This is something Endpoint like to do pretty often. They like to, to get aggressive down in this B area. They like to try and take away this area of the map. Like you said, a lot of teams will just set up those A executes. So if you can get the right timing on your B pushes, you can get a lot of information and you can start to get those flanks going. And oh, go on, Mighty Max got flustered for a second there, but he eventually realizes there's a player on his screen. 3-1 for Endpoint, not losing a single player in that round, but they will be up against a gun round this time. And Mighty Max has plenty of money here. Might be worth him upgrading away from that UMP. Or maybe he'll be a bit greedy and try and make the most of it. I guess Vertigo's a map where you can play some close angles. So the UMP's not the worst gun to have. Well, yeah, especially if you're planning on throwing some like deep smokes and getting aggressive. There's plenty of positions that can be played, especially around the side of the ramp which is actually exactly where Max is going to be going, but he'll lose the battle to HS. An important one for Nordovin to take into their first buy run. Of course, this, not quite a bonus, but there are a few players that still can reinvest fairly easily, in fact, on endpoint. Like Robin with 7,600 will pretty much come up with 9,000 even if they lose this round. So he'll be able to drop a rifle or two over, make sure that his team will still be able to purchase. And that's if they lose this one. If they even make things costly, this is going to be worrying. And Thomas already again showing some strength on that CT side. Easily opening things up. Sure, there have been trades back in return, but the HP highly favors endpoint. Yeah, Endpoint basically untouched, while Nordovind have two players who have taken damage, mainly HS taking the brunt of it. The upside for Nordovind, though, is that Endpoint have to remain spread out across the map. That means Surreal is currently solo holding B. So even if Surreal gets one kill here, if Nordovind can just trade him out, they can be pretty happy with that. Surreal's still got full nades, though. That could be a big benefit to him. He could really try and slow them down with this utility, but the timing's off. Uh-oh, Surreal almost caught out, but the smoke is dropped defensively. Nice shot onto the first man, and Surreal still staying alive behind the smoke. Finally, Harra gets him, but that's allowed time for the rotation to come into play. Harra's getting that bomb down, but in the meantime, it's Robin now, the last man standing, and Nato Safix gets both those kills from the back lines to give Nordovin their second round. And good play across the map from Nordovin. That's a good sign for me here on their T side that they were able to go back to B like that. Yeah, the only worry from my perspective is money. Uh, you just look at the CT side. That's all you're concerned about, Tom. Yeah, money. In, in the life, only thing in the in world. In life as well. Yeah, it is, it is goal number one. But uh, yeah, for in the game, we are looking at already the T side with some vulnerabilities here. Uh, they've got themselves an SMG, so probably going to be a faster play, but the CT side have still got everything. Even that AWP, crucial, misses the first shot, tries to stick around for a little bit longer, but isn't going to be able to find anything, and in fact will switch his position. One portion of the map that a lot of teams negate and don't really utilize enough, I feel, is middle, especially with the changes to Vertigo, allowing you to jump through. I feel like there's a lot more of an opportunity for a proper B split that a lot of teams will not use at all. Mainly, I think that's because the A site is still the easiest place to get the bomb down. And a wrap around onto the A site only really works in after plant positions. I think you getting in from behind can be really difficult because you have to basically walk through a massive choke point. Even still, though, Mighty Max has gone down in the very early stages of this round. A good start, but look at the rotation. The CTs have already brought over a third man to try and defend. Crucial. He actually gets wrecked. Really nice shot from NATO. Goes in for more, and he just fouled two kills into the site. This is already looking done. Robin and Surreal may even just have to think about saving. They've got an extra nade or two that they might be able to use to try and deny the plant. And HS does get tanked a little bit, but well, in fact, actually a lot. He's down to just two HP now, but it, it doesn't matter. They haven't found themselves anything back into the round. And well, the Dane is the person we're looking at, or at least one of them, but winning them the round. 
Yeah, Nato Safix is having a, a really solid start to this game. He's even going to get the opportunity to get the AWP into his hands now because of that shot he landed against Crucial. So that's a, a great sign as well. And yeah, just those entry kills from Nato basically won them the round, in all honesty. Just some great shots. There's not much more to say about that. If you get those early entries onto the A site, we know how difficult teams can find it to retake once the bomb is planted. It's pretty difficult to clear out the ramp fully. It's pretty difficult to deal with the, the crossfires that can be in play. So good stuff from Nordavind. I'm liking what we're seeing here at the start of their T side. Even though it's not a map they have the best win rate on, it's definitely a promising sign for them that they've been able to play across the map so far. There's the first shot from Nato Safix and the second one just as quick. That second man on the CT side standing in front of those smokes to try and maybe get a kill and then fall back, but Nato Safix doesn't allow that to happen. And now Endpoint's money is called into question ahead of this round. They've got those two rifles, but outside of that, very little investment into this one. And Harris is going to go down early. The Mac 10 dropped out of his hands. Oh no, Nato Safix also hitting the deck. The rest of the rifles have got to recover here for Nordavind. That bomb is dropped in the open as well, but the kills are coming back round. Robin quickly traded out, and Thomas only has 12 health in the 1v2. Still, you do have to worry a lot of the time for Nordavin. I, I feel like they choose interesting moments to go for that mid play. Like. You know, you know that their economy's a bit battered here. You know that in a lot of cases, sure, maybe you'll get a ramp push or something like that. But rather than like taking it slow and basically being a little bit more patient, they just run out into mid and take these fights. And then point, wow, their decision making in the Antico round seems to be solid. Like they, they, they get themselves into very strong positions, almost winnable positions in the majority of these rounds. And it's something we definitely need to give them props for. This time, though, it's looking like we're back to basics. Uh, a ramp challenge, Crucial catches that nade in between his thighs, which is something I wouldn't advise. HS has actually got very far forward here. They've got to be careful. They don't expect him to be this far forward, and it's already going to be an opening kill. Tensky, in fact, has found another through the smoke, and Thomas is the only remaining defender. NATO happy to round this corner at pace, knowing that he has an inherent advantage in the trades. And I actually like this from Nordovic. Like the difference between their Vertigo and Mirage, I'm, I'm actually favoring their Vertigo at the moment, which considering how poor their map statistics are is a surprise, but it's because I think they don't have necessarily the depth within this map. So they're just playing as a unit, but that's where I actually think they're a better team. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're keeping it pretty simple, keeping it pretty basic and standard, but just use one or two flashes there to, to get yourself through a ramp and then focus on the spacing and focus on the trading. And it also helps they're winning a lot more of these opening fights, it feels like. But yep. that's in part because th there was a decent flashbang there to help out, and the man at Sandbags just got caught a little bit in the open. And then once they win that first fight, it becomes so much easier to trade because you get the information as to where that second player is. You start to win out those trades, and... All in all, Nordavind are really showing up here early on this T side. And this T side is oftentimes what can be a struggle for some of the, the lesser experienced teams on this map. So just good signs are all round for Nordavind right now. Surreal's trying to take this fight over at B, but he's not successful in doing so. And Endpoint have to try and do something with the pistols. They did come close in that previous round, though, when they had the low buy, and there's a man in that smoke. Oh, Nordovin might not have realized that. There's a player behind them. I think Mighty Max was spotted, though. He's been taken out. Mm. This is actually where I want to slightly disagree with something that you said earlier about these two teams, like in terms of skill. Sure. Because I, I actually think that... I, I think Nordovin are a higher skilled team. I just think... Endpoint are a more consistently skilled team, if okay. that makes sense. Like, if I was going to play 20 matches, overall, I think statistically, Endpoint are probably going to do better. If I was going to play, if I, if I was going to bet on a player to drop a 30 bomb, I'm going with the guys from Northern. I, I think that they can have the individuals that can take over a map more. Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen regularly enough. That's why if you see some of the upsets that Nordovin manages to create, they're against some like, incredibly good teams, like Fnatic, for example. Whereas I would never bet on someone like Endpoint to be a fanatic. I just don't think that would happen because I don't think their skill ceiling is anywhere near as high, at least for now. So if, if Nordovind are going to get into their stride like we're seeing right now, like Tenski, Nine Kills, NATO 7, I think there's a couple of like HS, Chroman up there as well. That's where I think they become a team that can be unbeatable. It's just that they have all their players going off at once. Unfortunately, that is a very rare occurrence.
Yeah, I guess more of the Nord of In players have a have an ability to have those games where they take over would yeah. be one way of putting it for sure. I have seen games where Crucial has definitely just taken over. Yeah, no, there's and a couple Thomas as well. Sure. There's a couple on the endpoint side. But yeah, I think that that's a fair assessment is that Nord of End are more inconsistent with their skill, but but when they're at their peak, they, they can be a very, very tough team to just deal with on an individual basis. And right now, that is really what's happening for Endpoint. They've been struggling in these fights. Nordavin again showing us a different look here, going for this early mid play. A couple of smokes deployed, but Mighty Max is waiting for them. Thomas here to back his teammate up. Two kills, almost the third, but Tensky jumps through the smoke to get the trade. It's still a 2v3 for Nordavin, though, and they don't have that bomb in their hands right now, but Croman could be in the critical position. This should be a free kill. Yeah, and the most important one at that, because that's their path on towards this A site, waiting for the Molotov to fade before he actually goes for the kill. It gives the chance for Tensky to rotate. That patience is actually so important because if he gets that kill instantly, the remaining players of Endpoint probably deny the bomb from getting to the site. Instead, he waits for the Molotov to be just within seconds of fading, and then he gets the kill so the Tensky can just run straight on. And now the thing is the CTs have absolutely no idea where Croman is. They probably expected him to take the bomb and, and then fall back and plant it himself. So now he has the chance to actually rotate back in from behind. No idea that he's here. The first kill goes his way. The second, though, might have been a bit of a risky peek. He could have just waited, waited for Surreal to take that risk instead. And now Surreal has saved him and brought back another round. Yeah, it was looking so good for Nordovin to begin with there. Like you said, I loved how Chroman just waited to get that kill, waited for the right time so that the bomb could quickly move over to A, could quickly be planted. But then they, they don't really play the bomb. They don't really play the time in the post plant. They give Surreal the opportunity to take the fights. And even though Nordovid had been winning the fights up until that point, that's where it goes against them. The upside, though, is that Endpoint have had to fully reinvest and they've got a couple of SMGs in play because they only had one man surviving at the end there. The CT economy could really easily become a problem for them right here. And Nordovin still have plenty of money in the bank. So this is a chance for Nordovin to make sure they come right back into it. And once again, the SMG tries to push into ramp, but Nordovin are ready for it. HS almost loses out, but he wins that first fight. And Endpoint go a man down early. Yeah, and this is a round that they really can't afford to lose. Financially, again, they'd be in a, a relatively awkward position. I love this boost. Yeah, it's a good boost over the top. I think especially because once you do spot these players out, even if you only get one kill, you can just continue to spam through the wall. Again, there's a few players I think do that better than most. S-Tag and Bondic are actually oh. two that seem to know all the pre fires NATO, though, he doesn't need to shoot through the wall. His entries in this game so far have been flawless. Multiple times he's had multi-frags getting into the site. I think without him, they'd be really struggling to get a lot of these rounds through. And now, once again, an opportunity to get the bomb down. Although a lot of the smokes are going to be fading, in fact, in the favor of Croman. He's hit a few fairly tasty timings over the last couple of rounds. And now it's left all onto Robin. Now, a couple of these players are, win a, are within a bullet of death, be that in the face or in the chest. However, I'm not sure he's going to be able to do too much to deny this plant and saving the rifle is probably the right thing to do. Yeah, it just has to back away. I think that the issue in this round for Endpoint was just that they weren't ready for NATO Suffix to be pushing that short position so quickly or the, the scaffold position, whatever you want to call it. They had two players that didn't seem ready for that fast push and once he got the first kill onto Mighty Max, the second man had to try and readjust as quickly as he could. Just couldn't land any shots. Nato Safix continues to do good work on those entry kills, especially in from that scaffolding position. And if you get those early kills onto eight, it does become pretty difficult for the retake to come through, especially when Robin's in a 1v3. So the save call has to be made. And so far, so good for Nordovin. Here is Nato Safik, so that's why they didn't expect him, because he was running into the flames. And there you see, first man not looking his way, second man just turns around. They weren't ready for the aggression on short. They just overlooked that for a second too long. Because they put that molly down, they thought they were safe. But you need to make sure you watch that molly for just a few seconds in case the player's ready to push. And unfortunately for Endpoint, that's the real difference maker in the round, and that puts them down to yet another low buy. A fairly aggressive peak coming out from Mighty Max. It might be enough to actually cause the rotation of that rifle. He definitely spotted a couple of players going in this direction. 
Of course, you have to remember, we do expect better from both teams on their T side. It's one of the only maps within the pool, I think we can say that fairly confidently. Like, a lot of teams who struggle on the T side, I feel like I shouldn't really be playing Vertigo at all. Nonetheless, we do now have almost a full stack of this ace. A fairly decent guess from Endpoint, mainly because they've spotted a lot of players in this direction, but more so because this has easily been the favorite of the two. The other thing as well is we're not really seeing Nordovin go for too many wall bangs, but just as I mentioned it, NATO is actually going to find the kill onto Crucial, and that is the one thing that a lot of teams have to remember. This wall, although it may look strong, you can definitely do a hell of a lot of damage through it. Yeah, I like that it's a bit more difficult to spam through now than the uh, the wood previously. I think it's in a pretty good spot right now where the CTs, you can try and play behind it, you can try and boost behind it, but you, you still have to be aware of it. But you're not going to die too quickly that you just don't want to play there. Robin with that AK is on this A site and he's got himself two kills. Nordovin not able to trade him out. Robin trying to reposition. There's a man up on top of the bomb site. HS taking away another kill and Surreal's trying to move in. HS has got to keep his teammates safe, but NATO goes down. The rush onto the site is successful and Endpoint finally winning around on A. It hasn't felt like they've been able to hold that A site too often, but this time with the pistols, they get the job done, mainly thanks to that one AK of Robin. Yeah, this is one of the, the problems again. Like This is now a second time where we've seen Endpoint steal rounds away with very little. I, I think that because Nordavind are so dedicated to one of these sites, it was very easy for them to just take a big risk in this round. Like There was one player, I think it was Surreal, who was initially on the B site. Everybody else had rotated into A, ready to defend. And I, I feel like Nordavind in that round, after spotting so many players, taking so many fights, maybe should have tried to fake things out a little bit because although their A site takes have definitely been working, they have become a little bit one dimensional and well. That is one hell of a shot from Crucial. Through smoke, while blind. It doesn't matter though, because Harry's found a kill in mid. Yeah, Nordovin looking to make the most of that. Smoke put down. There should be a gap in that on at least one of the sides. Well, oh, Crucial's looking for it, but it's actually a pretty good smoke. He's not got much vision, and neither has Thomas. He finally spots one man. Nice angle over the top there. The bomb is dropped, but Harry gets a kill onto the site itself. Tensky just about gets away with the bomb, so this bomb should go down safely. Harris' position is a pretty common one, but it goes almost unchecked. Mighty Max manages to make up for it. And now NATO, Safix, and Tensky have got to lock this down from the bomb site. It's all on NATO. He just can't land shots. Mighty Max with all three kills. I don't know how he got away with all of those, but he steps up for endpoint. Yeah, a good round from him after a relatively quiet performance so far to step up when needed. And again, it was a little bit disjointed. There's evident rounds where you can see that Endpoint clearly know some of the angles that maybe haven't been particularly used so far by Nordovin, like that little boost up over the top. We've, we've seen positions over their smokes that have become a little bit of an issue. So it is clear that Endpoint are very, very comfortable on this map. And you have to bear in mind that I, I do expect a fair bit from them going into the T side. At the same time, if we can see the last couple of rounds go the way of Nordovin, there's still a fairly good chance they take this. Opening kill from Crucial, comes in at mid and he gets a second. This is where Nordovin struggled to trade, but finally Tensky is able to land the shot. Still a bit slower on those refrag attempts though in some of these situations on Nordovin. They give the AWP a couple of easy fights to begin with. And Surreal's got an AWP of his own, so Nordovin need to make sure they're aware of this secondary AWP that's in play on B. Might not matter though, Mighty Max has pushed all the way into the A ramp. This is a massive amount of information. This is a massive advantage for Endpoint in terms of players, and Nordovind would have to do something really incredible to get back into this round at this point. Endpoint should be in a position to close this one out. We're gonna see this jump up. Ugh. Nice shot for NATO. If they can somehow get this kill cleanly onto Surreal, but he hits one while blind. The timing shot is gonna set him up wonderfully, and now it's left all onto Tensky. He's trying to smoke the cross, get himself further into the site, but he's being flanked on. Mighty Max has done well at this. Surreal actually going to go down, but time is going to be everything. I don't think he has any idea that this flank's coming in so fast, and, well, he doesn't even manage to get the kill onto Thomas anyway. Scoreline equalized, 7-7, seven to seven, and there will just be enough money for Nordwin to scrape a buy, but it looks like they might actually take the hit when it comes to some of their weaponry instead.
Yeah, only the two AKs for Nord have ended into the last round of the half. I think seven rounds is definitely decent for Nordavind. If they can get eight, obviously, that would be even better for them. But considering it's it's the T side of Vertigo, a map they don't play too often, this puts them in a position where they've got the chance to, to try and compete on this map, which is the main thing that they were looking for out of this first half. Endpoint have definitely grown into this one, though. We're starting to see some of that aggression come through from the Endpoint side. We're starting to see them take away some areas of the map. I think they're starting to figure out the way that Nordavind have been playing and the way that Nordavind have been generally just grouping up towards a site really early in the round. Crucial's playing close to this smoke, trying to help out Thomas. There is a rotate coming over to A as well, and Nordavind are starting to set up these players. Crucial will try and draw the attention away from Thomas, who's waiting on that left side, but the smoke comes up. Now Thomas might be isolated in his position here. Shot nonetheless, but it's a very quick trade back. HS will keep things even for now. Of course, in terms of an execution, there are going to be a few pieces missing, but this time there hasn't been such a heavy rotation. That's one of the things that's been working a little bit better for Endpoint because they have just been all in commitments coming out from Nordov. In the second they decide on a site, it seems like that's the goal from the get go. There's been a rotation now to bring a third player in. He's just watching to see if there is any sort of flank. Maybe trying to bait them into a rotation here. Molotov going over the top, which will force Mighty Max back. They boosted Crucial into this, and there's actually running out of utility. They have a single flash. They need to get themselves onto the site and start trying to get that bomb down. Otherwise, they're going to have no cover when they eventually try to do it. Oh Well, at least the bomb goes down safely, but Hara is very much trapped on the bomb site right now. I doubt he'll be able to get away with too much from that position. Nordovin have got players ready to back him up, though. Nades coming in from the CT side. Harris still in such an awkward position. He misses that jump up, but Nato Safix comes in with two kills of his own. Oh, it's a boost going on, but Surreal picks off one, makes it a second, and it's all on HS. It's still the two orps in hand on this retake, but HS... Okay, what? Surreal just absolutely bangs him. I don't know what else to say. That's just a no-scope through the smoke. Yeah, I, I don't know how he knew. Maybe the smoke was fading and we've been misled a little bit, but even still, if that was the case, it should have favored, uh, I think, was, was it HS in the smoke? Yeah. Either way, that is absolute filth, but a great comeback. Five of the last six rounds coming up for Endpoint as they streak it together to give themselves the lead going into the second. And as said, this is where I now expect Endpoint to basically close this to the finish. This should be their map to take going onto the T side where they can set the pace. They'll probably have a little bit more depth than what we've seen from Nordovin just by the amount of times they played it. And mainly because this is not a map that Nordovin are particularly good at. Well, we're going to get the replay. At least I hope we're going to get the replay of this final shot. First two were nice. I don't think he was even no. properly aiming at him, in all honesty. I think that's just straight up luck. But sometimes fortune favors the bold. Or the bold. Or the bold. <laughs> don't think Surreal is bold. Not quite yet. We'll see. One day. If he ever falls asleep near me, that might change. I, I don't know if that's a threat or if it's... I don't even know what that's it is. a promise. Oh, a promise. <laughs> wow. Be careful, Hawker. I'm a dangerous man. Oh, God. Well... I like my hair, so I'm going to be staying away from Tom in the future. I think you look good bald. You think? No. No, I really don't. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I really do not. I was thinking about shaving my hair at the start of the lockdown, and then I thought... I was saying. Eh. <laughs> I think you did shave your hair at the start of the lockdown. I shaved my hair regularly. But either way, irrelevant. It is going to be... Just coming in, same bait onto the nade to make sure that doesn't do anything. It doesn't matter, though. Krum is actually going to get a kill through the smoke instead. Give them the man advantage in this pistol round. One that they desperately need because this retake is not going to be easy. That flashbang, though, is spot on. He runs out of bullets, though. It doesn't matter. He's got Tenski to help him out. In fact, with both kills, now Robin and Mighty Max have one hell of a job to do. There is still a kit available. Robin, he gets himself the first kill. The fight is dodgy. Chrome, and he's still surviving. He's going to get knifed, though. And now it's all onto the one versus one. Tenski already with three kills. The clock is ticking. He's yet to find the kit, but he will get the kill in the end. Get the kit. He's got to pick okay. it up. 
And that's actually going to be relatively oh, close. No. I don't know if he's got this. He does. Ooh. Just. That is disgustingly close. Oh, you could see the panic from Tensky because he tapped the bomb after he got the kit, then got off it for a second, got on it again. It was uh, all a little bit confusing. I mean, the, the fact that Tensky even gets the kill with the burst fire of the Glock is kind of ridiculous to begin with. There was Tensky helping out his teammate to start the round. Mighty <laughs> Max running into the smoke. I want to see how Tensky wins this fight. Yeah, just bursting with the Glock. Mighty Max must have missed some shots. And, well, the CTs clearly have been through a, a hard battle after that round. You can see it in their eyes. But they're ready to go again into this next one, this time with some better weapons. That dude's still just rocking the knife for now. Which of, uh, which of these CTs would you be, Tom? Which one would you choose? Which model? They all look pretty similar, uh, to be I honest. think I'm the guy on the T side with the big bald head. Oh, okay. That's just probably me. I definitely don't want to be that guy with the, the shades on who thinks he's cool, but just clearly isn't. Oh, no, this this guy looks like... He looks like someone I don't want to talk to. Yeah, he, he looks very, too very scary. Very to, I, yeah, I would not be that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to look into those eyes. Yeah, no. Get me out of here. Well, we are ready to get back underway, and Endpoint are ready to go with a force by Robin and Mighty Max picking up the AKs into this one. Pistols on the rest of the players. Pretty good in terms of the utility bought by Endpoint as well. Those pistol players can get quite a few nades between them. And over on the Nord of Insider is full rifles, albeit only the one M4 for Tensky, who got all those kills from the pistol round, which is why he's got that extra money. Mighty Max looking for a fight here at A ramp. He spots the shoulder. This AK could be about to land a headshot if HS pops his head up too quickly. And there it is. It's Croman who actually goes down. Really snappy flick from Mighty Max to open up the round, and Nordvind is still fighting for ramp here. If they're not careful, if they lose another fight, they might be in some trouble. I think those two smokes landed on basically the same spot. Yeah, one of them thrown by the T's as well, so clearly wanting to gain a little bit of extra ground. I don't have a particularly good feeling about this round for Nordvind, though. I think this is one that could easily slip away, especially when you consider they don't have a whole lot of utility. Nice work from Tensky, though. That might have just changed things. He comes up with three HS white peaks, though. He just hands away the frag. Didn't really need to take that risk. I guess was hoping that there'd be a trade available. Now NATO, just a scout in hand. The last remaining players, both with AKs, but tagged within inches of their life. If he hits even a single shot to the toe with that scout, it will wipe out either of these players. Time is going to be everything. No, oh, he doesn't. He whiffs. And now it's all on to Harry. He does have a nade. That might be enough to kill Ooh. off this remaining man. It's going to land just above. And that leaves Mighty Max still standing. Flash goes out. Another one, in fact, just to try and give him a chance to get away. Both players solo. He just needs to land a bullet, but it's not going too well for Harry, at least for now. And he needs to get a move on. No kit available for him, at least. But there is a potential one versus one. There's the first. Now, does he have an idea where the remaining man is? It seems like he knows exactly where Robin's going to be standing. Just needs to connect a single bullet, and he'll do just that. Look to get onto the bomb, and a nice 1v2 for Harry. Yeah, I think Robin popped his head up from the sandbags briefly, but it was enough for Harry to spot it. The defuse is close, but it is there. Another close defuse for Nordavind, but one that goes their way. And if there was a way for Nordovin to, to win it out here from the CT side, this is the kind of start they would need. The issue is that Endpoint got another bomb plant, so I think their money should still be pretty strong on the Endpoint side. I don't know if they'll want to go for the force up yet again, though. It, it might be time for them to take a weaker investment into this one. But wow, Endpoint are taking it. They're going for another force buy. Mighty Max has another AK. They've got Galil's. It's definitely not a bad buy. You can see why Endpoint have gone for this. In fact, Endpoint technically do have more rifles than Nordavind in this round, albeit that's only because of the Galils they've got in play. But you can never underestimate the Galil. It's definitely a, a decent enough weapon. Harrow, though, has been boosted up on mid. This can be a difficult angle to deal with. NATO Safix just tucks into the corner and they fight together in tandem. Nordavind locked down mid completely. And I think we might get an end to the force by wars with Nordavind winning all of them. Rio has managed to gain some ground, though. He's made a fair bit of noise, and with the position currently being held by Harry, he might have heard this. 
So it looks like there is already players watching here. They've definitely heard all the footsteps. Just need to be careful not to throw their lives away to this gun, and they won't. Thomas, well, just playing a bait game on the other side of the map, waiting to see if anybody rotates. Gives him at least a kill, but in all honesty, it, it's, a, it's a bit of an awkward spot for him. Either he just saves this Khalil, which is not something that anybody ever really wants to do, or he tries to hunt down some of these remaining players, and he might actually have a free one onto NATO here. It's a bit of an, an odd angle to take. very confused as to the... I guess he was expecting him to go up the ladder. But I'm not really sure why you wouldn't play on an angle where you can't get shot from the stairs. Unless you just really didn't expect that to happen at all. Well, 20 seconds for Thomas. Even with that kill onto NATO, I don't think he's winning this. Goes for the fight at the end, so he doesn't want to save the Galil. He just wants to try and do damage. But try as he might, there's only so much damage he can do. And at this time round, Endpoint will be taking a weaker investment. Probably just pistols into this round. Yeah, I think if, if Nordovin had a chance here on Vertigo, this is exactly the sort of start they would have needed, right? Where you get off to a good start, you get uh, yourself into a lead, and that's what's happened for them. Make sure to check out Hellcase, where you can use the code SLTV15 for a 15% refill bonus. You can also open up the Hellcup 8 Pro Case to help contribute to the dynamic prize pool, now standing at $30,972 precisely. As we head into the next round, HS is in a pretty good position to deal with this. Croman also there to help out. Endpoint trying to find some success on towards A, but it's not working. These are all solo fights and not fights they're going to be winning. Nordvind up to a 4v2. Still not with a huge amount of money, so they'd like to keep this one clean. Or maybe give Harry the chance to actually farm up a little bit of cash. Instead, it's going to be Nato going for the fights with the Palace, and he'll win both out cleanly. So that, that's exactly what they want to have going into what will be the first proper buy round for Endpoint. This is where we need to see the UK roster actually step up to the mark, because if, if this is going to be the, the sort of continuous struggle for them, like getting off to decent starts to matches, having an okay half in the first, and then letting everything slip away, well, they're going to be eliminated from this tournament. This is their last lifeline. If they don't manage to win out this series, in fact, they are out of the Hell Case Cup number eight. They won't have a chance to fight for the land size share of this dynamic prize pool, which obviously can be contributed by opening the SLTV case. Either way, it is going to be an early trade. Already NATO finding one, but Miss Mighty Max to fight off Tenski. They're taking big risks fighting for this ramp. Now, they should have a decent idea that HS is going to be here somewhere, and Thomas just about gets away with that duel. Left on just 17 HP, the CT side might even have to make a decision here just to try and save, because financially they are not in a good spot going into the next round, and in a four versus two, it seems like they still believe they can do this. Do you believe, Tom, though? That's the question. No. Well, NATO Sapphic still has faith. Oh, trying to line the no-scope. If he'd have got that, then I'd have really started to have some faith in him, but he's still hanging around. Harris only just arriving to the site now, and uh, with these two orbs, it's, it's going to be difficult, but at least they have some nades. Molly into short. Smokes available for them, not being used just yet. Finally, the smokes will be deployed towards the bomb. The time is so far gone, though. They've got to get on the bomb right now. NATO Sapphics taps it, and I think he's just trying to bait the endpoint players in at this point. Nice shot. Ooh, nice shots from NATO, but he's not winning the round. He's just doing damage. Orp will be saved on over, but remember, Nordovin's money is still good enough for this round, at least, but it's, it's going to start to become an issue if they lose this next one. And this is where Endpoint have finally got those full buys where we were expecting them to come on strong here on this T side of Vertigo. I'm still not really a fan. Like, I, I get that you have that sort of extra money to still buy into this round and the damage is valuable, but it, it means you've taken a hit to your own purchase to try and hurt theirs, which it, it just... It's like headbutting someone. It just doesn't really make much sense. Like, sure, you might hurt them as well, but you're using your face as a weapon. Like, it doesn't really seem like the smart thing to do. I don't think I have a very strong head either. I don't think I'd ever headbutt anyone. We can test it if you like. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm how, good. how strong is your head with Hawker? <laughs> well, he died, so clearly not very strong. <laughs> Sounds like a great show. 
<laughs> it sounds like a show that would be cancelled after episode one with the death of the first guest. But imagine if it was a game show where like you, you progressively earn more as the challenges go up. This is I'm not selling you, am I? You've made it to four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> this time you have to headbutt a bowling ball that's been dropped off <laughs> like the gherkin or something like that. Man. Well right now we're just playing Counter Strike, so we can uh, we can talk about our game shows later. Right now it is CSGO that we're watching, and we are watching Endpoint start to move into this B side of the map where Nordivid have got three players. Heavy stack on the B side, but Harrah's been spotted, and he's in trouble. Oh, crucial. Doesn't get the kill. Harrah is somehow still alive. This Molly must be the death of him, though. He must be a goner. Finally, crucial gets that kill, and he makes it a second. Taking lots of damage in the process, though. Nordivid trying to see what they can do, but they're in a 2v4. These smokes are cutting them off. I don't know if they can really go for this. Nato's trying, but he misses the mark. Oh, he gets it second time of asking. All of a sudden, Nordevind are in this round as Nato lands an excellent shot onto that man, but Mighty Max comes back in. Oh, he doesn't know. He's clearing the angle, but Nato Safix keeps on going. He is really stepping up now on this CT side. And Endpoint's money is still in trouble. That could be a round which really helps Nordevind try and get this win. Yeah, that that's a that that looked like an unlosable position. I I don't actually know how Endpoint managed to throw that one away. That's a four versus two with smokes down. No one de defending the bomb. Like, how does he get two shots off? Like the shots he's hitting, at least after the first whiff, was was very nice. This shot was disgusting. But I, I don't understand how it gets to a point where they're even coming back in a four v two. So. Big slip-ups coming in for Endpoint. Now they're going to try and challenge once again. Chroman taking a hell of a lot of damage, but he is still standing. Incendiary will at least deny their presence onto him for now, but there is still a rifle available. The nade over the top is going to be caught by HS. He's got his back and now just left with one man standing. It was only a half buy, a half investment, but Nordovin, they keep it with four players alive. Yeah, Endpoint now can't afford to let too many rounds more or slip either. They, they've had struggles closing out some of these rounds. That can't continue to be the case. The upside is that Nordavind now are in a position where, again, if they lose this round, their money will probably be uh, in a bad spot. So Endpoint only really need the one round win to try and get back into it. You can see, though, the odds over on Unicorn favoring Nordavind right now. And if they get this win on Vertigo, then they would be uh, delighted. Thomas sneaking through the smoke. And he lands an instant headshot onto HS, who was trying to take control of that position. Thomas now going back for more. The nade does damage, but it's Harrod playing the same position at mid, and Endpoint aren't ready for these angles. They have got themselves onto the B site, though. This could be all the difference. Surreal playing this close angle. He hears players around him, but the bomb's already been planted in a 3v4, and Surreal's going to try and be a nuisance here. Wow! How does he not get that kill? Harrod with the MP9 finds his second of the round. Robin's burning alive. He's taking so much damage from the flames. Crucial's got to land shots, but he's been blinded. He's in trouble and it's all on Robin with four players against him. I don't see how he's going to win this. NATO Sefix lands the wall bang and Nordavin inch closer and closer to victory. I don't even know what's going on at this point. The fact that Harry gets away with three kills in that round after he probably should have been dead after the first one is a little bit ridiculous. And then you've just got everybody hitting their shots. Atensky and Nato both having a fantastic match and the rest of the team starting to catch up as well. I, I think Endpoint just mentally looked checked out from this game. Like, Surreal, as you said, that should have been a very easy kill for him. Like, he's waiting on the angle with a significantly better weapon and still doesn't manage to land the shots. Like, it's getting to the point where you just have to feel like Endpoint aren't playing up to the level that we know they can. And on the other side, Nordavind have got some standout players. NATO is having a lights out performance, as said. Like they, they seem to have the, the better players that can take over a match. And we're, we're starting to witness that here with different players just stepping up again and again and again. And if that's going to continuously happen, well, there's not really much that Endpoint could do, even if they are the significantly better Vertigo team, at least based off prior statistics even better in this matchup versus Nordavind if you're going off previous statistics everything points to endpoint winning but the scoreline says otherwise
Oh, Croman saw that Molotov being thrown. He's thought about going for it. This is so risky from Croman. He's just standing here with nades in hand, but he knows that HS is close by, ready to fight. HS only with one kill for the time being, though. Mighty Max able to trade him. Croman goes down. Great entries from Mighty Max. Oh, Tensky gets two kills, though. So it's back to a 2v2, and Endpoint still need to get that bomb down. Thomas waiting on the angle on the boosted player. Could be a freebie kill. They haven't spotted out Harry, though. He's going to get the first. And Thomas, he actually whiffs a couple of shots. It's so close to him going down. Smoke can be thrown out. AK going to be retrieved. And Harry just trying to bait him in. The spam going to be coming through. He could just try and stick this defuser. It would be a risky one. But now we start to see the rotation coming back round from Thomas. He might have played this perfectly. Harry not thinking about this. Other angle, oh, the He switches spots. Six HP. Nothing is going right for Endpoint. Every single clutch going the way of Nordavind. Not even going to think about retrieving an AWP. It seems like he's too busy celebrating. This is just the same endpoint as we're seeing yesterday, it feels like. They, they keep putting themselves in pretty good positions and they just can't close out the rounds for whatever reason. They can't end up getting the round win over the line. AK's out again, but this is now six rounds in a row required just to keep themselves in the tournament, just to keep themselves in this map. And NATO Safix has already landed the initial kill. He's going back for more. He lands a second shot. NATO Safix taking over here with the AWP. The first two shots landed. And an endpoint continued to try and moving into the B-bomb site. But look at the rotation. Nordovin have so many players here. They're getting further frags. And Robin's left in another 1v4. This is looking like it's going to be endpoint out of the tournament. And it is. Nordovin knock endpoint out. And uh, remember when I said on the first day, I think endpoint might be one of the teams <laughs> that, that make it all the way, Tom? Clearly, I was wrong.